What's up, everybody? How's it going? Hi. <laughs> this is the Root Podcast, where we tell myths, legends, uh, drug stories. Especially and, for this one. Yeah, especially for this one. Um, and folk tales, all kinds of stories so that you can uh, make your life better, train hard, live long. Prosper. And also be strong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we get started, go check out Earthfed Evolutions. That's our Facebook group. Um, go go look up Earthfed Muscle on Instagram. Uh, we've got S- Old Saint Ripped out right now, which is what we're talking about today, Old Saint Ripped. But before we get that going, Dane, how many pancakes do you think a, ro- oh <laughs> a robot gosh. can make in a day? <laughs> at like least 50 million? At least 50 million. <laughs> well, there's a song. It's like a... It's like a Mr. Pancake Robot or something and Sanderson was singing it and he kept singing it and like was going on and on about making pancakes and he wanted to make 50 million pancakes because he was Mr. Robot Pancake Man and Lincoln asked for real if I thought a robot could make 50 million pancakes at once and he was like legit asking you that question (laughs) (laughs) and when I said no he was like you don't think like no I don't think so so funny because Layla, Lay- Layla in here like what three months apart? Yeah, and Layla would never ask that question, but I think it's only because she has an older sibling. Yeah, that's and, that's... and she's the second kid, yeah. and she just doesn't ask questions like that. Yeah, like Kai probably would have asked that when he was eight. Probably would, probably Devin would have too. Well, I, I was just thinking too. For for me though, Sanderson will never ask that question in his mind. He'll create the world that has that happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's where it's it's interesting build the world around the 50 million pancake a day robot yeah (laughs) yeah well that's that's probably more ideal that's exactly what layla would do too she was just saying the other day layla's my daughter who's eight and she we didn't send her to school until this year in third grade she's like the best eight-year-old artist i've ever seen and she was like I have art today. Oh, jeez. She's like, ah. And we were, Anna and I were both like, that, what? Why are you upset about it? And she's like, because we don't do anything. Oh. The art teacher talks about stuff that you're going to do in art, and nobody actually does anything. All she wants to do is, like, do art. Yeah. She's like, it's art class. Why aren't we drawing? They should have, like, learn the classics. Yeah. Create. C- copy the like, classics. Yeah, yeah. Copy with, like, your flair. Yeah, right. That's Literally, what I want to tell you with Sanderson is his drawings are like Keith Haring type drawings. Yeah. Do like crazy. I, I ordered that book for, oh, for you Layla. Did? Yeah, yeah. After you said that coloring yeah. book. I love that color. Yeah. I, I love that that artwork. And it has his whole story. Yep. There was another book that came with it. There's, There's like three of them. Anyway, yeah. yeah. That had his whole story in it. And it was basically like, like Layla. He's just drawing all the time. Like he wouldn't stop drawing. And it's, I, dude, it's so hard to do that in school. Yeah. You know? Well, that's what we're talking about. Kids. Santa. Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas. Um, so, all right. So this is our Christmas special, and we've got we've got probably a bunch of different ways to go with it, right? Like you have some. Yeah, I think. I mean, I would just dive into one. Where did what Santa's? I mean, so here I would I would go backwards. <laughs> Santa Claus, Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas is essentially the Dutch version of Saint Nick. Saint Nick stems from Saint like Nicolay of Myra, which is based in Turkey, and he was like a giving um, patron patron of the Greek Orthodox Church in the or in the two hundreds. There's not there's not a ton of historical um, reference to him, other than they think he was one of the individuals who was at the Council of Nicaea in 325. That's like one of the very few historical things around St. Nick. But St. Nick got this name as this giving individual. And then over time, by like the 11th, 12th, 13th century, it turned into, you know, Santa Claus in uh, Northern Europe, which then turned into Santa Claus in, you know, throughout the modern era but there's a lot more to it than just saint nick because saint nick of myra or mira whatever however you pronounce it in turkey um did not wear red and white outfits and he did not have reindeer and he did not have spruce trees and he did yeah. not have uh lights and, and ornaments and he and wasn't all that born stuff. on christmas like right. jesus right he wasn't he wasn't born on christmas either and that's another thing that most people most even church historians will recognize that like 
Jesus was born in like March or something. Yeah, like Christ was <clears throat> very, very. It was very, very unlikely that he was born around this time. And and what's well, let's our, start there then. Let's start with the time of year because we know why it's well, the last five days. What's ironic though, before we go into that, is yeah. that Saint Nick was born, I believe, like December sixth. And it's like all in this like jumbled, cloudy time yeah. frame. Yeah, I think that's the real story of Christmas. Is that it is it is hundreds of traditions smashed into one thing that we all feel good about, which mm-hmm. is doing good things for other people or giving things to other people. Right. And so ultimately, that's why it's the season of giving. You know, it's um, it, it, it's it's that time when you just feel better. Everybody comes together and you do something good for somebody else, right? Or lots of good things for other people. Can I interject one more? No, thing? no, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey, the country, is an Islamic country that celebrates like Christmas with Saint Nicholas, but it's celebrated on like January first, and it has nothing to do with with Christ, obviously. Yeah. And it's all about just that that giving That's the perfect tradition. segue, though. The five, the so so that that's that's why I wanted to. That's the perfect segue yeah. for the time of year that it's set and why Jesus's birth was put on December twenty fifth. Because, in not just so this is the Mayan calendar, the Egyptian calendar, so many old calendars before we had the Julian calendar, where mm-hmm. we say, oh, there's three hundred sixty five days a year. That didn't exist in most cultures. The calendar was three hundred and sixty days. In the Mayan calendar, it was 20 months of, or no, 18 months of 20 days, right? 360 days. And so you go, okay, what about the last five? Those five days were free-for-alls. Free-for-alls, literally, yeah. right. And that's why in Mexico, they still, Christmas is a week long. Christmas well, is not Well, and even think about it in the U.S., like, <clears throat> dude, you have Christmas. school. From Christmas yeah. till New Year's, you're not doing shit. Right, right. It's like this dead space where, you know... You would have crazy orgies, crazy parties, whatever. The festival of the light is then. Let's go. <laughs> right? So it's also right after the solstice. So the solstice is the darkest day of the year. So you light it up like crazy. And then those last five days are just partying, drinking, getting crazy, right? right. Doing whatever. And so that's probably the whole St. Nick thing on J- January 1st is that's the end of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the end of that and the beginning of the actual new year, 360-day mm-hmm. cycle, you know, and, and like – all of this corresponds with how we tell time, how we uh, how we do mathematics. You know, this is all celestial stuff that we we were experiencing as reality, and then made it work for our brains to fit time yeah. and to fit geometry and to fit all these other things into it. Um, so those five days are when all the crazy stuff happens. I mean, Hanukkah even happens right around mm-hmm. there every year. Um, same deal. But the characters associated is with it. it uh, that, Ramadan's the whole month of fasting that is... Is that earlier in the year? I think it's earlier in the year. I think it's the Kwanzaa's. Fall. Kwanzaa. Yeah, what's Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa though? That's an African holiday. Sub-Saharan Africa? I don't know. I think so. I think it's non, non-Muslim. non I don't think it's Muslim. Yeah. Um, but the characters are all different. The symbol of the tree comes from the original... The comes from the pagan, right? Yeah. So the tree of life, the, you know, the, the at Yggdrasil in the, in the Norse myths that we talked about, the ash tree... Um, uh, lots of lots of shamans uh, use the larch tree. Larch tree was their like uh, sh- strong tree, but most most primitive mythologies, if it wasn't a tree, like in Australia where it's a desert, theirs was a pole that they literally stuck in the ground. Yeah. So it's a thing that's symbolizing the climb to the heavens, right? And the boughs are, you know, the nests, the levels, the levels of reality that you can mm-hmm. move up and down. Um, so the tree symbol, but then the characters are what we're going to talk about. So the characters of Santa. Where are all the characters of Christmas? Jesus, Santa, uh, the elves, reindeer, uh, reindeer, uh, the toys, and uh, Santa Claus's wife. Uh, I forget her real name, Mrs. Claus. Yeah. Um, Henrietta Claus. The, yeah, the North Pole. <laughs> yeah, like, cold. Yeah, yeah. And, and the center, basically the center of the the world, the right. center of the globe. Yeah. And that's where it all sort of like cycles back to unifying like reality and and then that unified pagan slash trying to explain the unexplained slash let's trip balls on drugs and try and connect everything so that we can make sense of our lives yeah sounds like an e-commerce website (laughs) and 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 renew the spirit for another trip through like craziness cosmos yeah right like renew the spirit for okay we're doing this again 
and we've been doing it for millennia. Dude, I think that's what's so cool with all this stuff is the more you dive into it, I think the older I get each year, I'm like, dude, this shit's crazy. Like living is crazy. Like you oh, just yes. deal with yeah. so much, so many different journeys and adventures that like you never know what the hell is going to happen. And something like this to ground you is important. Yeah, you can't skip over it. Yeah. You can't skip over it. And that's why even like, even like the most basic, th this is probably one of the few things left. You know, I, I think I talked about this before, how I think our rituals are all really juvenile, you know, like graduation and, and weddings. Some weddings are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Lots of weddings nowadays are basically like, hey, here it is, uh -huh. you know, not, and they don't have like That was one thing I did want to talk to you like about that. later, not on this podcast, is, <laughs> is the ritual of a funeral. Oh, yeah. Dude, right. After we can discuss this. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I usually think, you know, like, they're, they're basically like parades. Yeah. And parades are, are pretty much like the, the most basic, you know, that's why kids love to go to them because it's like a little carnival, but there's nothing deep about it. And right. this, like, Christmas is where sometimes we get pretty deep. Like, you go to almost everybody's, well, a lot of people still go to church anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, go to that midnight service, like, you know, stay up. Everybody goes to see their family. If you miss your family, this is when most people commit suicide because they're yeah. missing out on this stuff. Yes, yep. Right? Absolutely. So that's a pretty good barometer of dude i think i think be doing. the important part is i think like christmas and thanksgiving dude i think they're they're freaking awesome times to be with your family and to just experience like that joy of like this is all that it, that matters so yeah. like the craziness that goes on throughout the whole year it's like it all comes back to what actually matters and what's that cycle yeah right yeah every everybody who comes together is figuring out some way to make their living on the planet one way or another. Yeah. And then you all come together and it's like, you bullshit a little bit, you know, you, you, you get go, drunk. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. you, you like, you bitch about your problems and then you like figure out or don't figure out anything and just move on <laughs> <laughs> and keep moving. But I, what I want to go into a little bit and, and I don't know how to segue into this is the, Norse or Northern European influence via psychedelics. Yeah. On Santa Claus. Yeah. So, well, well, how, how do they, how do they get around? Right. That's like the classic Christmas story is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Right. Right. So why do we have a guy? First of all, a guy brings presents to everybody. So that could just be St. Nick. Dude, I always thought this was creepy too. <laughs> And I told Caitlin this. Why didn't anybody sit there and be like, dude, there's some old dude with a beard giving kids like gifts. This is a little weird. Coming in your house. Yeah, like, <laughs> dude, that's not normal. That should not that shit shouldn't be happening. <laughs> Did you ever hear Cat Williams bit about this? No. Cat Williams bit is like, My son cannot think Santa Claus is real. <laughs> yeah. Oh daddy, Santa Claus brought me a PlayStation 2. Uh-uh, that is daddy's weed money. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's it's weird, but I, I, I so I was a lot of this stuff. I uh, Terrence McKenna goes into a ton of this yeah, stuff where right. he he dives deep into the influence that uh, there's a culture in Finland or the Laps. Yeah, 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 yeah. There yeah. you go. That and like what they do is reindeer herders. Yep, yeah, they're reindeer herders, and reindeer are directly associated. They're the animal associated with Amanita mushroom, mm -hmm. which is red and white. Yeah. They even when it's snowing, they're digging. Reindeer will dig for mushrooms. They'll eat the mushrooms. Um they'll urinate and when they urinate, a lot of these tribesmen, the shamans will collect the the snow laden urine. Yeah. Or the, the urine that's on, on the snow that's frozen. They drink that. They'll trip balls, but the way the way everything comes back together is the red and white is related to the Amanita. Yeah, the reindeer is what's eating, and how how they're involved with the tribe. Yeah, um, and on top of that, the spruce or the any evergreen like um, what the are they? What kind of trees are they? Deciduous. <laughs> <laughs> Deciduous are the leaf trees. Oh, yeah, God damn evergreen. It. Just evergreen. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're they're associated directly with Northern Europe, where these guys are yeah. from, and right? with Amanita. Yeah. That they like. Oh, they grow together. Yeah, they feed right, right, each right. other. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And and the the when these guys, so some of the shamans pound the mushrooms raw. Some of them drink reindeer piss. Uh, some of them 
so, some some people will drink shaman piss after they've tripped on it because there's still the compounds, the psilocybin still going through them. But they all say that it feels like you're flying. Yeah. And they know now too. I've read a couple articles of scientists watching these reindeer who who eat the mushrooms, and they're saying they make very different noises. They like roll their eyes into the back of their head, and they'll like they'll like jump around and be playful and stuff. So yeah. they probably are also feeling a sense of flying. Yeah. And so so shamans who first discovered this most likely were seeing them and being like, oh yeah, they feel this shit too, man. <laughs> yeah. So flying reindeer makes total sense, right? So it's like, all right, the red and white that that makes the red and white hat for the mush yeah. for the for the for the outfit for Santa and even all that to, stuff. I think even to a point, the elves make sense just. There was there's a thought of like well mushrooms and elves are, are like are like directly related yeah. and it's like like that's like the visual that you have is mushrooms like, and elves are a known ecosystem <laughs> it's, it's a just like the Amanita it's a and symbiotic the relationship <laughs> that elves, they feed off the same bacteria exactly and microorganisms <laughs> yeah so all right so I I we were talking about um, the book uh, the masks of God like two months ago yeah I, f- I finished that book but there's a crazy story right in the middle of it that relates to this it totally relates to this and so i'm going to try i'll probably butcher it but i'm going to try and tell it as well as i can and it's about it's about this um kid who realizes when he's five and it's a yakutsk shaman so kind of same part of the world as the laps probably pretty far away but um, no yakutsk i thought it was far east in far Russia. east yeah but i'm saying like you know you, as you go no, north, yeah, yeah, everything okay. gets tighter up there so, I was just singing about the risk board. Yeah, right. <laughs> Where, oh, that's right by Kamchatka. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Irkutsk. Yeah, right. Um, so this is a kid who at five years old supposedly remembered his previous life, told it to his parents, and then, like, you know, laid this all out. And so it starts with him as a 20-year-old guy. He's got a 30-year-old brother. He gets married. There's a piebald... Remember we talked about yeah, piebald animals yeah. before? I've seen one. There's a... <laughs> There's a piebald uh, stallion born on oh, their shit. farm, and these two brothers own the stallion, and and they're like, we know this is going to be a legit animal. The 20 year old brother dies apparently, but he remembers still being alive, so almost being in like an epileptic fit. Yeah. Thinks he's dead. Everyone else buries him, oh, literally fuck. buries him, and he's going like, no, why are you burying me? But he can't communicate. They put him in the ground. Finally, he hears digging, and when the digging ends. The he thinks his brother's gonna open the coffin and disinter him. Yeah, no, no. He, he he opens it. Some somebody opens it up, and it's and it's ravens. And it's the ravens pull him up out of the grave, and he's standing above the grave, and he hears this crazy beating sound, and this bull emerges, and the bull's like the classic figure of, I mean, tons of stuff. You yeah. know, like the bison. We talked about the buffalo the one time, but the bull is like the the mythical figure of the underworld. Bullberry stampede. Yeah, there you go. It's a uh, <laughs> mythical juice of the underworld. Mythical juice of the underworld, overworld, and Middle Earth. <laughs> and it takes him back. It takes him down to the underworld. He gets weighed on this first guy's hand, and the guy goes, "Oh no, this guy's supposed to go up. He's supposed to go up into the the basically through Middle Earth back up into the shaman realm. He's supposed to be trained for for shamanism." The bull takes him back to where he was supposed to go, and he comes out of the dark world back into the middle world where another raven comes through his legs, scoops him up, flies him up into the the shaman realm. And when they come through the shaman realm, he sees this giant larch tree. And the giant larch tree has nine different levels, and nine's another one of those numbers that Uh the Norse were always obsessed with. Nine different levels, and he's standing there looking at it, and he gets weighed by another guy, a similar guy. They talk about some of them have black faces, some of them have white faces. He gets weighed by that guy, and the guy says, he goes up on the ninth tree, on the ninth level, top level. So, like, great, great A shaman. Yeah. They send him up there. They lay him into the thing. This was a 20-year-old man. He's still in his body. He still has a 20-year-old body. And he, they lay him down, and he lays down, and then a winged reindeer flies in and lands on top of the nest. So it's literally a nest in a bow. And the reindeer lands above him, and it puts its teats right in his mouth. And he starts nursing on the reindeer teats. So ultimately, he's there for three years. But as he starts nursing, he starts shrinking. He's getting smaller and smaller as he's nursing on this top bow. In the, in the three years that he's there, he looks over the edge. He hears the shaman drum a couple times. He hears a shaman drum beating. And eventually, you know, he sees uh, the first time he sees it was right after some of the dudes who were like the keepers of that opening for the shaman realm had had one of the sons had gone down into the regular into the middle world and brought a woman up and hid her in a barn. And yeah, all the yeah. barns are made of iron in this world. Yeah. So they hid her in an iron barn, and really soon after, 
this woman comes through, he hears is the beating of the shaman drum. And they used to say they, the shamans used to say they ride on the drum, the beats of the drum. So he, the guy rides on the beats of the drum and he emerges through the hole. As soon as he comes through the hole, he puts his drumstick onto his forehead and he turns into a bull. The shaman plows through the door of the barn, finds the lady and brings her back in. The significance of that is, one, he's bringing her down through the hole like it's a chimney back right, down yeah, to yeah, earth, yeah. right? But he was responsible for bringing her soul back because the two ways you got sick were blockages and you would, you know, massage those out or, uh, you know, bloodlet or if you had a boil, they would fucking, you know, pop your boils. Or the other way you got sick was you were literally, think about somebody who's like almost unconscious in a fever or whatever, your soul was taken to the spirit realm. Right. The shaman's responsibility was to ride the drum beat to the spirit realm bring you back and, and that would heal you, right? So literally bring you back down through the chimney of the world and give you the gift of new life again. So again, this is a connected to these, these shamans in that way where probably he took some of those mushrooms before he went there too. So dude sees this happen three times, three different times, and he, and he's, you know, he can see the shaman's faces when they come up through and they go, they go back out. Eventually the guy gets really small and the dude who manages the shaman realm is like, all right, send him back down into earth. There's a woman's body waiting for him. They sent him down into the earth, and he kind of relates the the coming through the hole to vaginal birth, too. Right. Yeah. He comes out, and by the time he's five years old, he remembers his whole story. He came back to earth 10 miles away from where his old life was. He travels there when he's eight years old to see if his family recognizes him. Nobody recognizes him, but he sees the red stallion, the piebald stallion. Oh, shit. And he's like, this is the stallion. Yeah. This is the thing, right? Yeah. So he learns how to shamanize even more. He gets a teacher and he like learns to do it. And by the time he's 12, he's like infamous, you know, in the area. And one night he's at, um, they have a festival every year where it's like the, the time that they make the mar fermented mare's milk and they get pound, they get, they pound mar fermented mare's milk and get wasted on it. Yeah. Same way the Mongols do. Yeah. And, uh, he's at the party of this rich guy who's throwing this thing and he's like 13, 12 or 13 years old. So he's like recently famous and an old guy comes in and he immediately recognizes him as the one shaman who came through and pulled the lady and took her back down. And the guy looks at him and he goes, I know you. Oh, shit. You were on the ninth bough of the larch tree and you were looking over your nest, nursing on your reindeer mother. And the 13 year old kid is like, fuck you. Don't tell people that shit. He's like, why would you tell everyone my secrets? You know, because he feels like he's being exposed. As, yeah, yeah. You know, and the other guy's like, if you're going to kill me kill me and eat me because I have to be reborn on the ninth level. <laughs> what the hell? So the legend is this dude literally kills him. Nobody ever finds the body. That guy's killed like that night. Nobody ever finds the body. Because he was eaten. He was eaten or he went to the spirit realm or whatever. Yeah. And this guy gets reborn there. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like a, that's a firsthand, that was a, supposedly like a firsthand account from a really old dude of a guy he knew growing up was the story in, in uh, Masks of God. That's weird. Told well. straight to Joseph Campbell. Yeah. Yeah. But there you go. Like, there's the, there's, there's the idea of people who live in the North yeah. who use a red and white thing to allow them to travel to this other realm. Right. There's a flying reindeer in this realm. And this was unrelated to Christmas. Well, that's this what I'm trying to figure out. What, why the, is it just the red and white because it is the color of the Amanita? Or is it like... From the like, if you're hallucinating and you see, you, you see more red, red and white becomes more Coca Cola. That's like, why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to like. You would think it would be green or something, right? Green is the other color, red, yeah. green, and white. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. So, so that's the that's the theory on the flying reindeer, though, is that the the idea of of these these beasts that literally eat this on a daily basis share this experience with us where we feel like we're flying. They must feel like they're flying too. And so let's connect this with a thing that this, there's these flying reindeer that, that and the connection is around. a short fat dude that looks like a mushroom. That's red and white. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's, and that's just one tradition. So the other tradition would be St. Nick. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so what is like combining Nick it all? Yeah. And it's, it's taking, I think St. Nick was literally just the Christian way to describe like the gift giving behind behind the holiday and it's like not ideal yeah uh, not it like they they wanted to basically take a pagan slash i mean non-christian popular 
aspect and bring it into into the Christian world, and that's where I think Saint Nick is is how they use it. Like yeah, the saints always it. get those powers. The yeah. saints always get those like mythical powers. Yeah. Because it's Christianity, you're not supposed to have magic, but everybody wants magic. Right. Like right. that's the story about that shaman. And that's where like the old church, like the, the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church, they have saints of everything. Like if you lose something you pray to Saint Anthony, right? Yeah. If you lose or if you uh if you're, you know, if you want gift, it's Saint Nick, and and there's so many. Dude, saints we didn't for... grow up with any of that. the the whole The whole Protestant thing was like the Protestant thing was basically like let's let's have rational thought here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you went to a Catholic church and you're like, what is going yeah, on? This yeah. is cuckoo. Yeah. But that's the cool stuff. Like yeah. to me, it's that's really what cool. religion should be. Yeah. You know, like I'd sit there. This is why I'm so. The into Protestant this stuff, stuff is not entirely. Let's think logical. It's like let's take some of that weird stuff. And then pretend that we're speaking to God ourselves. Exactly. And it and yeah. it's like a. It's really, it's such a weird like intermixed. Yeah. Connection. Now that I'm really thinking about Santa Claus and Saint Nick and the whole world. Yeah, uh, the, I I think the thing that I think the thing about the season, those five days, is, they're they are a gift in in and of themselves. Dude, that's what everybody's got to remember: is the winter is any solstice throughout the year is directly associated with some type of celebration. Yeah. That's absolutely. the way it is. Yeah, it's it's like it's like, oh, this is happening again. We're yeah. gonna keep we're gonna keep living. Yeah. And then basically as we've modernized or continue to modernize throughout, you know, history as history as the planet ages, every faith basically just moves their celebration to one of those Time frames, yeah, of the solstice right. of some solstice. Well, in this one, in this one in particular, because of because of the literal way the 360 days of the year work, you're saying these are five free days. Yeah, this is a gift of five days. You should don't worry about your responsibilities. Yeah, so those make sure your kids are still alive. Yeah, <laughs> those five free days. You trip on shrooms. You pretend you're a flying reindeer. You give all your shit away because that yes. doesn't matter in doesn't life. Matter. And you restart. Reset, baby. That's what it is all about. <laughs> all right, get on Earthfoot Evolutions. Share how you are going to reset this holiday season. <laughs> See ya. See ya. <laughs>